you're listening to the Down East Mike Podcast, the quirky little podcast from Maine. And now, your host, Down East Mike. Dee deedle dee Good morning, everybody. This is Down East Mike, and you're listening to the Down East Mike Podcast, coming to you live from Down East Maine, deep, deep along the woods, wood, woodline coast, rocky coast of Maine. Boy, it's early. This is Down East Mike, episode 87, news and commentary for May 6, 2023. Yes, it really is already into the month of May. If you're new to the Down East Mike podcast, we should point out our wonderful little disclaimer that some of this is whimsy, some of it is true, and the interpretation of it all is entirely up to you. We also asked, did you know that the Down East Mike podcast Contains no mean words, just wholesome goodness from Down East Maine, a historical literary auditory candy store. And did you hear the bells on the door when you came in? We just do that just to get warmed up. In today's episode, we have Artificial Blood. That's a story from May 6, 1977. We have Making Butter Last Longer. That's from May 6, 1946. Lewiston, the Hospital City of Maine, May 6, 1896. We have the illness of the instant and so much more today on the Down East Mike podcast. Well, let's get to the world headlines first. Uh, Prince, let's see, uh, King Charles is going to get, uh, going to have some metal put on his head sometime today, I guess. There, that thing is in progress over there in England, if you're interested. Biden declares son Hunter has done nothing wrong. Um, Biden's also complaining about negative press coverage to MSNBC, and he suggests it's to blame for his bad polling. The Department of Justice is seeking a 25-year prison sentence for Oath Keepers founder, Stuart Rhodes. He was a Rhodes Scholar. Leaked documents show that Putin's chef is increasingly at odds with the Russian leader over Wagner mercenary deaths. Uh, Anything else that's not political, it's all political. Activists claim that Bud Light will go extinct for abandoning Mulvaney. Seems like they could use it this summer to put out forest fires or something. Uh, Sudan fighting, they're fighting there in the Sudan. And Ukraine is mocking Russia on surrender season. What a lot of nice news. So let's look at, uh, how about the main headlines? We'll see if there's anything happening there. There's a walk to preserve historic main highlights. That'll be held this weekend in Castine. That's news, I guess. With the COVID-19 public health emergency ending, the main CDC website is going to stop updating the vaccination numbers. Okay, no more vaccination numbers. Main lawmakers could see their salaries rise in the next legislature. Have you ever seen a picture of the main legislature and how big it is? How many people are in that room making more laws? It's amazing. There's an awful lot of people running that government, government down there in Augusta. Thankfully, we're in down East Maine. We're a long ways away from that. Uh, Maine Native is part of a team that found a planet engulfed by its star. Not just anybody can find a planet, you know. Anything else in Maine that's exciting? That's about it. The main thing is that COVID is no longer an emergency. Uh, Okay, so let's get to... We should do our illness of the instant first. Oh, dear. I almost hesitate to bring this up. It borders on elder abuse, but not necessarily. Today's illness of the instant on the Down East Mike podcast is Doc Worker's Delay. Doc Worker's Delay. I encountered this myself. Um, uh, We were down at the bait shack, uh, Uncle Vance and I, and we had finished uh, filling up, uh, baiting a bunch of trawl. And I'd turned, I'd walked down the wharf. I was heading back to the pickup truck. That's the one with no windows on it and the bad starter. You got to hit it with a hammer to get it to go. And uh, 
I was at the truck. I was sitting in the passenger seat and trying to kick the rope aside to get my boots in there. And where was Uncle Vance? He was nowhere to be seen. And I realized then that he was suffering from dock workers' delay. And that's the way it manifests itself. Um, it's basically if you're working somewhere, not necessarily dock workers, but if basically if you're working somewhere with another person or, or more, and when your party reassembles back at the, at the starting point and somebody's missing, they're suffering from dock workers' delay. Thankfully, there is a cure for it. Um, it's, it's kind of it's a physical cure, but uh, one of the um, one of the remedies is, is is it's the old rubber band on your wrist and you snap it. So just like when he left the wharf, if he would snap that rubber band and say, "In two minutes, I'm going to follow. I'm going to follow down East Mike, and in two minutes, I'm going to be back at the truck." Uh, if he snapped that rubber band, then he would probably remember that little little sharp little tap there would, would, would remind him of what he needed to do. And alternatively, there is a string that you can attach to somebody that's a potentially suffering from dock workers' delay, and you attach that string to them, and they can follow the string back to the place where they need to where they need to start out. How about some birthdays that dock workers delay? Nothing on the Downey's Mike podcast should be construed as medical advice. See your primary care physician. Uh, birthdays today. Willet of Eastport turns 58 years old. Willet is a bud tender for a local grow operation. He's a kindly guy. His nickname is Bud. So everyone remarks, isn't Bud tender? A little bit of a pun there, it's a funny guy. Happy birthday to Elsie of Caribou. She, at 92, spends most days looking out the window, thinking about times gone by, and wondering what happened to the good old days. Elsie also has a donkey in her yard, if you've driven by and seen that there. On this day in 1977, prices were spurting up. That's a really weird, weird headline for pricing. 1977 inflation was definitely an issue. The increase uh, reflects an annual inflation rate of 13.2%, promising hard times ahead for American consumers. What else is new? Uh, Oh, another little story here. There was a smoking hazard. Future aviation disasters may be averted if pilots stop flying in smoke-filled cockpits. Medical experts have found that cigarette smoking in small cockpits reduces the physical ability of pilots to respond in emergencies. The carbon monoxide produced by smoking causes significant impairment in their vision, coordination, response time, concentration, manual dexterity, and ability to make judgments under stress. While passengers are forbidden to smoke during takeoffs and landings for fear of fire, the crew and stewardesses sometimes puff away in the crowded cockpit. Even non-smoking pilots are attract or affected by the smoke around them, suffering from eye and nose and throat irritation, headaches, and nausea. That was from Jack Anderson and Les Witten's column in the United Features Syndicate. Also on this day, 1977, Maine's Public Utilities Commission had given Uh, New England Telephone until May 16th to submit a plan for allowing two members of the family to share the same listing in a telephone directory without cost. Of course, today you're trying to get your name scrubbed from the internet, but back then it was a big deal to get in the phone book. The Public Utilities Commission issued a formal order on Thursday which would place a moratorium on any charges for changing a residential telephone directory listing between the time NET complies with the directive and September 1st. New England Telephone had sought permission to charge existing customers $7.50 each time a listing is changed. My, how times have changed. What else did they talk about there? Um, Oh, a separate story. The Public Utilities Commission said that York Lines, Inc. had petitioned to curtail bus services between the towns of Sanford and Springville. The company said it operates eight hours a day between the York County communities and seeks to reduce the operations to four hours a day, five days a week. Saturday services would be eliminated. 
York Line says it receives $22 a day in revenue for the hours in question, not enough to pay the driver. Not much to keep a bus on the road. In 1977, May 6th, we are talking about artificial blood, and that's a story out of, uh, well, we posted out of Washington, D.C. Long-awaited human testing of artificial blood is imminent following successful animal trials indicating many persistent problems have been overcome, researchers say. Leaders in the research attended an American Red Cross Blood Substitute Symposium, which ended on Thursday, said tests replacing all natural blood with artificial substitutes has progressed from rats to advanced primates, such as baboons. I've just returned from a conference in Sweden on artificial blood, and after these discussions, I believe human tests will begin soon, but probably not in the U.S. And that was Dr. Leland Clark of the Children's Hospital in Cincinnati. Uh, Another doctor said, "Uh, To my knowledge, no human studies have been done, but I think we are closer to that than we have ever been. Stringent human testing rules in the U.S. may delay trials here. Very stringent. Developing artificial blood has been a goal of scientists for decades. Such a substance could be used in treating blood disease for major surgery that requires massive transfusions and also to end persistent problems of getting blood from human donors. If only more people gave blood. The most promising research is centering around compounds called perfluorocarbons, chemical concoctions of fluorine and carbon. Hmm. So uh, I just looked up uh, an accompanying story from Modern Story to see from 1977 where we are today with our quest for artificial blood. And we found this headline, Artificial Blood Product One Step Closer to Reality, with $46 million in federal funding, a University of Maryland School of Medicine physician scientist will lead a new federally funded research program to develop and test a whole blood product which is storable at room temperature that can be used to transfuse wounded soldiers in the field within 30 minutes of injury, potentially saving thousands of lives. It's a $46 million research project administered by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, in collaboration with the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy. And uh, they noted here, we have assembled an outstanding team to develop a biosynthetic whole blood product that can be freeze-dried for easy portability storage and reconstitution. It'll be designed for easy use in the field by medics at the point of injury and will perform like a traditional blood transfusion, for example, to stabilize a patient's blood pressure or to facilitate blood clotting. So they're working on it, but it sure has been a long time. I think it's time to roll back the clock to this day in 1946. Today we want to talk about how to make butter last longer and go further. It's actually an ad from Life magazine. It shows mom there, and the the child is uh, one of them's, Looks like they're putting jelly on bread, and then the other, uh, the little boy is putting butter on bread. So they're putting some butter and jelly on it. But they're in front of a, a new a refrigerator, and the it's a hot point electric refrigerator. After a host of thrifty, efficient features in the new hot point electric refrigerator, you'll especially prize the new butter conditioner with temperature control. Now that saving butter is so important. This is right after the war, of course. This feature not only keeps your butter sweet and fresh, but makes it go further by maintaining the right consistency for easy spreading. You'll also like the other economies and advantages of the six-way cold storage compartment, easily adjustable for every type of food. This is 1946 that they had a butter compartment. Compare quality, and you'll see that every feature of this great hot point refrigerator is outstanding. From the famous thrift master mechanism and the many advanced convenience features to the gleaming white Cal gloss finish, this refrigerator reflects the top quality, which has given hot point a 40 year reputation for dependability. 
And they also are showcasing a Hot Point Home Freezer. And remarkably, it looks just like the freezers today. Things haven't changed all that much. I, those refrigerators, if you could find one, they're probably still pretty good. 11 years ago, the future began. It shows us somebody pushing down on a piece of foam in, in the seat of their car. And it was a new era of comfort. Soon you will find more riding pleasure in your new automobile because of the U.S. Koi Lawn Foam Cushions. They were born 11 years ago, the beginning of an age of wonderful, luxurious comfort. From Koi Lawn Foam's thousands of light and pliant cells, breathe under, they breathe under the slightest touch of your body. Your tired muscles relax on these cushions of air, which support you with gentle firmness. You never knew that so much copy could be written about a seat cushion in a car. You have met Coilon foam cushions already in the lounge chairs of airliners, in supremely comfortable theater seats, in the chairs of your favorite smart restaurant. The smoothness of your Pullman berth, the deep and perfect sleep you enjoyed in one of America's fine hotels, may well have been gifts of U.S. Coilon foam. Big long ad about foam. And the theme there was Serving Through Science, the United States Rubber Company. Very patriotic time. And they're based out of Rockefeller Center in New York. Had an ad for Airwick. You remember Airwick? Chlorophyll? Why risk offending? Airwick kills cooking odors, smoking odors, bathroom odors. Airwick freshens stuffy closets, nurseries, and sick rooms. Those were the days when we had an actual sick room instead of a sick house. More than 6 million people have already discovered Airwick, the bottle with a magic wick which kills unpleasant household odors. Simply open the bottle and pull up the wick. Unpleasant odors disappear almost immediately. And you'll find Airwick at all better stores. Good old Airwick. Next ad was uh, Freshen Up with 7 Up. You like it, and it likes you. It shows a happy young man here with his arm around a bottle of 7-Up. It was a good-looking bottle, green bottle, red label. Some of my studies are tough, but they seem much easier when my mind is fresh because I'm able to concentrate on them better. It's a boy looking at his bottle of 7-Up lovingly. Clock is at 11 o'clock behind him. It's hard to concentrate on a problem when your mind is weary and stale. That's why it's a good idea to interrupt your thinking now and then and freshen up with 7-Up. For there's a cheerful quality about this drink that helps to brighten your mood in a brisk, clean flavor that is the very spirit of freshness. So for a fresh viewpoint and a fresh start, Fresh up with 7-Up. Just stop at any place displaying the 7-Up signs. We need some 7-Up. We had an ad. Well, we're going we're gonna to skip that one. How about this ad? Is your wife a Gemini? Gemini, the sign of the zodiac that denotes a nature with two sides. Versatile, entertaining, lovable, but changeable, often contradictory. What man can't see a bit of Gemini in every woman? most of all his own wife. Well, there are two sides to most women, the dreamer, ready to hitch her wagon to any star, and the practical one with two feet firmly on the ground. One side will take chances with you on almost anything. The other helps you keep your head, make a success, and build your future on a foundation of soundness and security. This is the side that appreciates the importance of protecting your common welfare. It's the side to value with you the importance of providing prudential life insurance against unexpected future needs. Your local prudential representative will be glad to discuss your present life insurance plan with you, and he can tell you whether it includes the best policies to cover your particular needs, whether these policies include all the benefits of advantage to you, and whether your payments are being made with the greatest saving. Make an appointment to go over these points with him soon. And then you could also enjoy the Prudential Family Hour every Sunday afternoon, CBS and the Jack Burt Show every afternoon 
Mondays through Fridays, ABC. It was Prudential Insurance Company of America, a mutual life insurance company, the home office in Newark, New Jersey. I know somebody worked for Prudential. Uh, let's look at uh, U.S. The next story this is Life Magazine, 1946. It's a picture of a of a field with a bunch of North Dakota storage bins. The fields hold 20% of the U.S. wheat supply and therefore the fate of millions. And the headline was, U.S. seeks wheat for the starving. Last week, Europe, which has recorded some 600 mostly local famines since the beginning of the Christian era, and Asia, some part of which has seen famine almost annually since 100 B.C., were once again beginning to starve to death. Famine again was riding in the wake of war, but in the wake of a worldwide war, there now rose, rose a worldwide famine. An estimated 500 million persons in such countries as Italy and Greece, France and Germany, India, China, and Japan were subsisting on 700 to 1,500 calories a day. Not quite enough to die on, but not enough to live on. It's a real cheerful article, isn't it? Four million Chinese were already dead. The Poles were eating their seed grain, which is agricultural suicide, and the Chinese were eating clay. One-fifth of the world population threatened with malnutrition and starvation. And that's the article's all about uh, generating food for the world uh, after the, the war's end. And they spotlighted in New York at the El Morocco in New York. Adina gets bula bula soup, uh, prosciutto and melon, lamb with vegetables, uh, rolls and coupe Saint Jacques. I don't know what that is. The meal laid out above. They have a picture of a meal at this uh, swank restaurant in New York. Uh, it includes eight vegetables and extra portions of lamb. Contains two thousand calories and costs eight dollars and seventy-five cents at El Morocco, one of the finest restaurants in New York City. Hardly a typical American meal. It is nevertheless typical of America in its abundance its nutritional variety, and its certain wastage. It's also a meal which most Americans can obtain today, even though they usually eat it in far less pretentious, though equally nutritious form of pea soup, plain roast lamb, and vegetables. Uh, ironically, the only parts of this meal which, if given up, would help in the immediate famine emergency are the rolls, some butter, and some salad oil. Shows them pre preparing that. And they contrasted this uh, restaurant with a meal at, from Brunswick, Germany. And the meal laid out above contains 600 calories, and it cost about 11 cents. The Eichturn Keller serves 200 meals a day, mostly to skilled machinists and shopkeepers who have the savings to afford it. Eating at such restaurants regularly would consume two-thirds of an average German worker's wage. Brunswick is in the British zone of occupation where the food ration was recently decreased from 1,500 to 1,000 calories per day, and it may drop down to 900. Thus fed, the average American would find it difficult to remain long out of bed. In the British zone, working hours have been cut from 48 to 40 hours weekly, and even so, employees have fainted on the job. Uh, and then in company story, how to do with less bread, the housewife's crumbs can help feed millions. Every U.S. family wastes one slice of bread a week. I know I do. If each family saved one slice of bread a week, this would add two million loaves a week to the world's bread pile. If, in addition, U.S. ate one piece of cake and one slice of bread less a day, it would save enough to provide bread for 20 million people worldwide for six months. And they have some examples here. Bread is wasted in the home in four ways, three of which are shown above. By burning toast, by throwing away small centers of rolls, and by trimming edges of sandwiches. Then they have another picture here with stale bread. Usually thrown into the garbage can is a fourth major cause of waste. Waste can be avoided by letting bread dry out, rolling it into crumbs, which has many uses. And then they had French toast, a tasty way to eat stale bread, casserole dishes. There was a lot of focus on bread. 
Uh, let's move on from Life Magazine. Uh, I had some recipes here. After. We'll, we'll roll it back to this day in 1892. Over 200 men were fighting a fire at East Machias on Sunday. It commenced on Talbot's Mountain and ran toward the north. Over the hill to Hadley and Lake Road, two houses narrowly escaped the flames. And the boats were out the same day searching for the body of Alexander Huntley, the last of the missing men. Sounds like a mess. At the port village is noticed a new coal shed built for a steamer. It's said that two steamers are coming to East Machias this summer to different wharfs. Will Cates is building a new store and James Watts is building a new wide platform before his blacksmith shop. Can't you just hear him hitting the, the metal there? Ting, ting. Uh... I can't quite read the name, but I think it's Levi Larrabee, LL, set a fire the other day on his land at Box Harbor, which ran over his land, burning two good fences, and went roaring through the green trees of Horace Foster's, nearly burning a large pile of wood. Mr. Larrabee was not well, and the excitement affected his heart, and he came near falling in the road. What a tragedy. Uh, John Bigelow of Dexter led a team of two traveling men last Friday. They agreed to leave the team at a stable in Newport, and Mr. Bigelow was to send after it the next day. Well, the team was not left at the stated place, and after four days of diligent search, the team was found under an old shed in a retired place. The horse was in a pitiful condition, having been without food or water and covered only with a thin blanket during that time. The traveling men. Mrs. Lois Freethe of East Surrey, Maine, aged 70, who had been so corpulent for years as to have been unable to walk, began about a year ago to be reduced in flesh and improve in health as well, and at the present time she can go up and down stairs and walk out of doors. It's thought that she has lost fully 50 pounds. We could beat that today, couldn't we? 1,500 boxes of heron were seized at Lubeck by the customs officers. The fish were imported free from some of the islands, probably, says the Machias Union. The, uh, the national news. Uh, three raids on liquor saloons have just been made in Keene, New Hampshire. $600 worth of liquor seized. The California State Board of Health is trying to start a movement for the establishment of a lazaretto for the care of lepers. Even then, the State Board of Health in California was heavily involved. The occupants of 15 disorderly houses have been arrested in New York City, one of the houses being owned by March Grand Juryman. The houses are, most of the, are some of the most notorious in town and have had for years had immunity from police interference. A few more stories here, 1896. Uh, from Brunswick, Maine, uh, Friday morning, just before working hours, Orrin White was passing ball with some associates near the Beaumont Mill in Topsom. The ball went through a fence. Mr. White sprang over after it and plunged into the river. He was immediately carried over the falls and drowned. The body has not been recovered. Mr. White's a young man of 22. He's unmarried. He had just engaged with the Denison Manufacturing Company to work in the mill and was to have commenced work this morning. S.A. Turrington, the expert diver, was at work all Friday afternoon searching for the body. Grapples were used and the body was recovered about 2 o'clock. So I'm thinking 1896. It was probably like a hard... Uh, helmet uh, diving operation with an air compressor and a hose and all that. They didn't have the tanks at that time. Uh, Jonesport post office was robbed. The burglars blow open the safe and get $300. They were always blowing up safes then. It was an old school kind of robbery. And another hospital is talked of at Waterville. Another big one will soon be built in Lewiston through the exertions of the Dominican monks. It will make Lewiston the hospital city of Maine. Well, we ran a little bit long today. We don't have an uh, insect of the instant. We did have a flower we're going to look at, but we're, we'll pass it off until next time. Let's look at quick look at the forecast here, and then we're going to send you out the door to meet the day. Remarkably, the sun's coming out. We haven't seen it in, in uh, weeks, and it's a sunny stretch ahead for today, Saturday, May 6th. 
2023, sunny with a high near 72, north wind 5 to 10 miles per hour, gusting as high as 20 miles per hour. For tonight, clear with a low of 49 and looking at sun, Sunday, sunny with a high near 71, northwest wind around 10 miles per hour, again gusting up to 20 miles per hour. Go fly a kite at the beach. And you know what? You look out ahead, all next week, sunny every day, highs get up near 70, Almost scary because when it gets that, uh, you have that kind of a stretch of weather ahead, that's when mother starts looking around the house and and uh, saying, well, maybe you could get up on the ladder and do X, you know. That's what could happen. I hope that you and your loved ones en enjoy a day ahead of you that is full of grace, love, and kindness. This is Down East Mike. Until next time, I wish you a great day. We'll see you. Won't you let it go?